guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Anno Clark. It's Friday the 28th of August. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus and Charlie Adam here with me. We are delighted you could join us. Like, share, follow us on Facebook. We'd love you to get more and more people joining the football family here on the programme. And if you are on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Simple as that. So, lots to talk about. And of course, a happier state of mind, Ruffy. Suddenly, we've got two European games with two European wins. Yeah, it's fantastic. Last night the scores were brilliant. Uh, and Tam called it right. You know, I didn't think it'd be as convincing as that, but seemingly fair, fair dues to the two teams, Motherwell and Aberdeen. And it's uh, it'll be a happy, happy place to be in both stadiums this morning. Players will be absolutely high as a kite. Looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, hi to Niall has joined us, Lachlan Gold as well, Tom Vincent, thanks Tom for joining us, Brian Walsh uh, as well, Brian, great to have you on board, uh, Tony Holton, uh, Robert Monroe and Nicky Twig, Nicky, good to have you with us as well, as always, familiar faces, familiar names, Lindsay Buchanan, uh, lots of people <coughs> joining us as ever, uh, showing the support for the programme, so thank you to you all, um, lots to talk about, we will talk about Motherwell and Aberdeen, give us your thoughts on that, we are still awaiting the SFA hearing outcome of volleyball and goalie and the eight Aberdeen players but as yet it hasn't broken the minute it does we'll be on the case um okay um suddenly you know a story can uh, move on grow arms and legs or suddenly the manager can think I shouldn't have said that um and I'm talking of course about Neil Lennon because uh, in today's press conference suddenly it was a little bit of a backtrack to be perfectly honest with you um, with regards to the players and some that had asked uh, if they could leave if there was no Champions League football. Um, first and foremost, uh, Neil Lennon quick to say that um, Odson Edward, he needs them for the long term. Well, I'm not going to talk about individual players. I mean, you know, we, we desperately want to keep Odson for the 10 or for going for the 10. So, you know, I think it's unfair to single out him. Well, Char uh, uh, Charlie, suddenly, uh, it looked as if we were on a red-hot story. He did say it. I was there at the press conference. I think what's happened is Neil Lennon has sat down with Peter Lowell, and Peter Lowell said to him, look, Neil, we have to sell some of these players and not look as if it's a fire sale or we're desperate to get rid of them or they're unhappy. Yeah, it was um, it was naivety from, from Neil Lennon. Um I think when you when you have a result like that, which was which was embarrassing, getting beat from, from Ferenc Varos, I think it's um, you know important that you just take stock in you know at the moment, like you say, with Rangers at Morelos, they're trying to get as much value as they can for the players. They will look to sell players, um, but you know devaluing them the way he spoke was was not good for the football club. And Celtic will obviously, you know, Peter has obviously spoke to him and said, listen, you need to backtrack a little bit, and he's done that, but. You know, um, I'll be interested to see what happens in the next, next period for Celtic. Yeah, no matter what the manager says, though, Tam, I, I am almost certain some bodies are heading out that door. Yeah, I think there'll be a few leaving, Peter, um, to be honest. And, you know, who knows who knows who'll go. I think if they keep Edward, I think that's the one that the fans want to keep. Um, there's, there's quite a few that I think the fans would want to get rid of. I think, obviously, Tom Rodgers, he's been linked away. He's not involved in the, the squad. I think that would be a, a good a good sell, you know, three or four million pounds for him. And listen, there's rumours that Ayers wanting away and, and different guys. And listen, if you don't want to beat the club, then you know the door is. You know, it's it's a massive season for Celtic. They only want players that are totally committed. I heard Scott Brown saying it the other day. So, you know, if you've not committed to the club, um, then then leave. You know, there's no point in going behind the manager's back or speaking to agents and 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 you know, going to newspapers. You know, if you don't want to be there, just leave. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Neil Lennon will, will, will get rid of the ones who he thinks who, who don't want to be there. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the word sell, Tom, because as everybody can see now, I know you are in Greece with Harry Maguire, and it looks as if they're giving you cushions in your cell now, so that you can be <laughs> so that you can be comfortable. I mean, <laughs> so is everything okay? Will, will the tea just be put through the little box, and then you can have what you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've only got a couple of weeks left here in um, a sentence, and then hopefully I'll be, I'll be back here. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the truth will come out. The truth will come out, Tom. It wasn't your fault. Anyway, apart from well, anything else, if there is... 
If there is anything that's kind of a bonus for Celtic fans, it is, of course, the arrival of uh, David Turnbull. And uh, as you can imagine, this 21-year-old talented boy uh, is delighted that he is finally this time through the doors at Celtic Park. Uh, yeah, I could say that just um, after all the talk and this last season. And then there was obviously some talk about last week and stuff. It's just, uh, yeah, it's good to get all over. Yeah, it gives me confidence. It's a huge club, obviously. Everybody knows that, and um, it will give me confidence going into training and games that they, they were looking to sign with, even last year and this year as well. So, delighted. Yeah, uh, 3.25 million is the deal. It's uh, four years, Ruffy. He's the only guy I know that wore the uh, previous strip, didn't get to play on it, and he's got the new one on there. Yeah, I can't imagine, you know, what the last year must have been for the boy. You know, it must have been horrendous to get his head round it and full credit to him to be sitting there with a Celtic strip on and then failing the medical and everything that goes with that, you know, wondering what his career is, is it up in the air or whatever, but he buckled down and he got the, the, the injury sorted out and he and he's back, you know, and and by all accounts, the, the, the games he's been playing with Motherwell, he's been very, very impressive, so... I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Neil D Lennon throws him in at the, the deep end. He certainly won't be up to speed. Uh, I think the big question is, you know, will the other two strikers be up to speed uh, from the game the other night? Because he'll hate to play one of them because I don't think Edward is going to be fit for the weekend. But I think we're all looking forward to him. We're all looking forward to him being successful at Celtic. And obviously that brings a Scotland call up. And uh, who knows, he might be... Another uh, addition to our midfield, uh, a very good midfield in the Scottish national team. But all credit to the boy. Uh, it's fantastic and really happy for him. Yeah, um, Sandy Grant says hello from Bahrain Naval Base. That's all the information we can give you because obviously for government restrictions. But Sandy, we're absolutely delighted that you could join us as well. Uh, and as ever, uh, Charlie always starts off the show in the first five minutes just uh, warming up with a serious face, and then he eventually lightens up and gets to know gets to, <laughs> gets to know how the boys are, and he's he's slowly but surely, roughly just getting to know us and getting the the the, the little vibe that goes around the show. Is it, is it fair, Ruffy, that he's just getting to know the madness that goes on here? Yeah, I think it's different. We began, we all be sitting beside each other. It's, it's much, I think we're, we'd rather all be in a studio sitting in the couch and having a laugh and a banter. So, no, it's strange. It's a strange way to do it, but it's good once you get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen Martin says, Charlie Adam loves nothing more than having a dig at Celtic. Impartiality is not a word he's heard of. Ask Charlie if he thinks Morelos <laughs> should be benched until he's sold. Steve, he's so staunch. Oh, it's just, it's just yeah, Stephen. Yeah, it's staunch, there, there's, Charlie. There, there's, there's nothing it's worse, Charlie, when you have to defend yourself. I'm def Listen, I think Celtic have made a very good signing uh, in Turnbull. There was one that I was excited to see this season. Um, and, you know, fair play to Celtic for going and backing it up from last season. You know, the lads obviously worked hard on his injury and come back and, you know, fair play. But, you know, why would, why would I want to stick up with Celtic? You know, I played for Rangers. Um, you know, I, I'll say it how it is. Celtic need applauding, but the other night wasn't good enough for a club like Celtic. And that's that's how it is. But you'll get honesty yeah. and you'll get my opinion. And if you don't like it, just keep watching. Yeah, absolutely. That's the great thing. Listen, uh, Charlie, the great thing is somebody has to be the panto villain on this programme. And fortunately, it's not you. It's prisoner in cell block H <laughs> next to you. <laughs> because, because what he does, Charlie, you're slightly different on Twitter. You'll offer an opinion and then you'll try and back it up. He throws grenades and then runs away to his <laughs> wife and never answers anybody. Just leaves the carnage around him. So there's two ways to look at it. Anyway, Stephen Martin listen, um, you know, cut some slack on it because, Stephen, although you're a Celtic fan, listen, uh, you know, you can't defend the indefensible, to be perfectly honest with you, if you were there uh, watching that game in front of a telly. Um, Celtic should have defeated Ferenc Faros. The fallout from it has been unbelievable. I mean, some people, actually, some Celtic fans have been giving me a lot of stick from Wednesday night onwards on uh, basically what I reported from that press conference. It was exactly how it happened, and they can spin it any way they want, but Neil Lennon actually came out and we asked him two or three times to clarify that situation with players who have undoubtedly approached him and said they want out if there's no Champions League. 
it's going to be interesting to see how many players um, actually go out that door and if it's significantly players that maybe did have a word in the manager's ear. But he, he needs everybody uh, singing from the same hymn sheet and battling for the same battle. Um, anyway, uh, lots of people giving us con uh, comments on the team. Uh, and thank you very much. It's raining in Barnsley, says Sean Grogan, who is a Falkirk fan. Sean, we're delighted that you are with us as well. So um, Celtic are playing Motherwell at the weekend. Motherwell, of course, finally able to bounce back, Tam. And it was emphatic. I have to say, Stephen O'Donnell's goal was an absolute raker. Oh, there's the warden at the door, Tam. Do you take your food now or do you just <laughs> leave it there? <laughs> Man, there's, a, there's a parcel. <laughs> That's a parcel, sorry. <laughs> is it a parcel? That is, yeah. That's brilliant. Because Ruffy, the big man, Tam's got a Tam's moved to a new house, obviously, witness protection scheme. And and he's he's now in He's now in a new area in East Kilbride. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, Ruffy, but there is a new area in East Kilbride where he's moved to. Yeah, he seems to be going up in the world. It's amazing, you know, when you get all these gigs, you know, and uh, all these new contracts and everything, he's branching out. And uh, obviously, there's no telling his whereabouts it is in East Kilbride, but uh, yeah. yeah, probably be an interesting one. I've just moved, yeah, I've just moved could... to a bigger council house. <laughs> yeah, you could, you, could, you, you could fit you could fit Tam's entire house in the bottom of Charlie's garden in England. It's as simple oh, as that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, Motherwell five, Glentorn one. It was a cracking goal, Tam from from Stephen O'Donnell, but they got the job done. Yeah, they did. You know, I said it the other day, Wednesday. You'd fully <laughs> expect, particularly Aberdeen, to, to to bury the other team. You know, and they did that six 0 But I thought Glentorn. You know, I was flicking back and forward through the two games. Glentorn up until the sending off were, were holding their own. And Motherwell were, were running out of ideas a little bit to break them down. But once the man gets sent off and Motherwell got the first goal, you could see the confidence coming through the team. You know, and, and they managed to get another four goals. And Stephen O'Donnell's goal was, was a cracker. You know, he, he's a tremendous player. Stephen O'Donnell, I like him. I think he's a good signing for Motherwell. Um, and you can, Tony Watt got a goal as well. And, and a few of the forwards played well. So, listen, that'll give them confidence going into the league campaign, getting five goals. Because I've really struggled in front of a goal. Um, that's been their Achilles heel so far this season. Yeah, and the manager, uh, Stephen Robinson, said he knew they would get there in the end. Obviously our first win of the season. We were no, under no illusions it would be a tough game. Um, I thought Glen Sorn come in. You know, they battled really hard. They, you know, they're organised, hard to break down. And I, I knew if we kept going, kept playing, kept their beliefs, we'd, we'd break them down, we'd show our quality. And, you know, that's what transpired. I think our quality shone through in the end five different scores and you know it could have been more so very pleased with the, the end result and, and obviously we progress in Europe. Yeah nice to see uh, Tony Watt getting a goal Charlie because um, I think he's I think he's a boy that thrives as any striker does on confidence and it, I think at his age now he needs to buckle down in there at Motherwell score as many goals as he can this season. Yeah, his career obviously scoring that goal against Barcelona has sort of shipped a little bit, going over to Bulgaria and things like that. But now he's settled at, at Motherwell. Um, I think earlier in the season he was playing on out, on the outside, um, you know, in the wings a little bit more, and um, obviously now back through the middle playing um, there. So get, when he gets opportunity to score goals, he'll do that. So it's a big result for both teams, Aberdeen and, and Motherwell, um, and they're in the next round. Like we said about the other day, was. You know, the first goal is important. If you can get it as early po as possible, it uh, settles everybody down. And, you know, 5 1 and 6 0 is an amazing result. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tony Watt scoring what every striker loves. I remember Robbo saying to me, uh, you know, who, ca who cares if it's three yards out from goal? It's still the same goal as one that you hit from 30 yards. And, and I think that's what Tony Watt will be thinking right now. So well done to Motherwell 5 1. Aberdeen, Tam says they were a pub team. In the end, it looked that way, Ruffy, for the Dons. They got a 6 0 victory. Yeah, I think Darren McInnes would just be happy to get this one out the road. Uh, they, they're one of the teams that I, I, I'm always expecting to do well in Europe. They should be in the, the group stages. You know, they've let themselves down badly in the last couple of years. So this might be the year, you know, but that will certainly give them a bit of confidence. And we're all talking about Aberdeen and football rather than everything else that's been going on beforehand. So Derek will be hoping that that's his season picking up now and uh, they can go on a wee run. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, although we will be talking about Aberdeen other than football, Ruffy, um, by the time that SFA meeting comes out and we get a, a real insight into what the punishment will be for the eight players from Aberdeen and volleyball and goalie. Let's have a look at the fixtures for the weekend to get a, a sense of what we can look forward to over Saturday and Sunday. It's Kilmarnock, Dundee United, Livingston, Ross County, St. Johnson, St. Mirren, Hamilton Rangers. They're Celtic against Motherwell on the Sunday with Hibs against Aberdeen. Obviously, these two matches uh, moved for the Europa League fixtures. So, Celtic against Motherwell. Give us your prediction, Tam. Um, I think Celtic will win. I think they'll bounce back. I think they're obviously hurting from the other night. Um, I think they'll come back with a win. I think they'll win 3-1. Charlie? Uh, 2-0 Celtic, comfortable. Ruffy? I think I'm going to go 2-0 Celtic, but uh, don't quote me on that because I might have texted you something different. So whatever I've texted you, <laughs> no, I'm the is same. what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah, I've texted you, yeah, I might yeah. have I'm saying. You know. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry. What I did, what I did this week to make sure there was no what I call classic roughy spread betting is I've actually written down what you texted me. So we've got that as set good. in stone. Uh, okay. So that's good news. Um, now, uh, as far as uh, Celtic against Motherwell, that is on the Sunday. So we've got the prediction. Um, now there's a change across it. Rangers, and this is an interesting one because uh, suddenly Steven Gerrard has changed his mind on Alfredo Morelos. He was dropped uh, last week, but suddenly in training, Steven Gerrard says he's starting to look okay, right attitude. I'll make that decision uh, later in the day. We've still got a session this morning, so we'll analyse and assess where Alfredo's at. Uh, what I will say is we've definitely seen um, a difference in his application. Um, he has refocused himself into training well and working hard this week, um, but it's a decision I'll, I'll wait till, till the end of play today before I decide whether he's included or not. So, he's changed his attitude. Charlie, he needs to change his attitude because if he wants out, he's going to have to play for Rangers and play well between now and the October 5th. That's exactly what it is. I think that somebody's always had a word to him and said, listen, the more that you play around or you don't play, um, the less likely you've got a chance of getting a move. So, you know, you have to go and play and score goals and, you know, get sharp and, and see where you are. You know, so it's, it's good that he's, he's there and obviously it gives the manager a headache. I don't think he will play this weekend. I think he'll still go with the same lads that played the other day because they won and obviously the roof scored and people like that. So you might see him on the bench. Um, but, you know, it's... Um, Listen, his numbers are amazing. He's scored so many goals for Rangers since he's been there. But I just think if they do get the right money from, they will sell. And you know, we'll see where where that is um, come October. Yeah, and the other key issue here, Ruffy, is the manager's got to try and keep on side the players who want to be there long term and who are doing. Uh, the job for him, Roof scored, as Charlie mentioned, and Itton as well will want to try and get himself used to Scottish football quickly. Yeah, it's a juggling act, but it's a good juggling act because uh, they're all potentially goal scorers for the club. Uh, and as the manager said there, he'll be analysing them from Monday to Friday. And if he's putting in a shift Monday to Friday and the rest of the players say he's putting in a shift, then it gives the manager a problem. But it's a good problem. But I, I, I would think he would stick with the two that he played uh, last week. And he's got to keep him firmly in his place to know that uh, the only reason he's going to get in that team is if he's playing well. Uh, so it's a happy position to be in. Yeah, ninth against first. Um, I don't think there's going to be too many problems unless, Tam, you're about to tell me different with your prediction. I think the Rangers will lose their first goal of the league campaign. Um, I think Hamilton will score, but I think Rangers will win 3-1. Well, uh, Balogun is back available for selection, so that might add even more strength to the defence. Charlie, are you agreeing with Tam? I don't think they will concede. I think Rangers will win 3 0, but it will be tough. You know, you've got to give Hamilton a bit of respect, as in that, you know, it's always a tough place to go when the Astro and things like that, but, you know, the quality Rangers have got will. will it's all about their attitude and how, how they apply themselves to the game. You know, it's, um, it'll be similar to what Livingston. They have to, I think they win 3 0 and um, you know, we'll go again. Yeah, I think 3 nothing as well, Ruffy. What about yourself? 
Uh, I'm going to go to nothing. I think it's always difficult down there to get the first goal, but I think obviously if they were to get that, particularly in the first half, I think Rangers are winning quite comfortably. I'm going to go Rangers 2-0. 2-0. OK. Uh, Niall, who's a big Motherwell fan, says uh, Rangers to win 5-0. Um, so clearly <laughs> doesn't want Hamilton <laughs> to have any goals for... <laughs> He's still hoping after they gubbed him last week. It's <laughs> yeah, uh, a bit of miss, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Bitter, bitter miss on this show. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Absolutely, Charlie. <laughs> uh, good, good to hear from you, Niall. That's uh, always good to get um, an insight into what you think the scores are going to be because it's a weekend when, uh, again, we're hoping that uh, football um, fans can get back into it. And just on that point, a couple of things I was going to say to you. The SFA thing would be... Uh, I, we might be lucky. Suddenly they might come out before five o'clock and say to us, this is what the... The situation is, but I don't think it started till four o'clock. So as ever, um, I think the SFA try and have their meetings so that they can get it on the back pages of the newspaper and blow the rest of us out of the water. You never know. Um, Peter, anyway, Peter, Nicholas, yeah. Have you have you got Gavin down there at the uh, Hamden just to cover it, just in case? Well, this is the thing about it, you know, Gabriel has been all over the country today, our reporter, who's mm. called Gavin by Ruffy, who, because of being at three World Cups, <laughs> Ruffy doesn't really like to remember anybody's name in case they get bumped. He's only, <laughs> interested, uh, he's <laughs> only interested in people with big names, which is why he's really looking forward, Ruffy, to our staff party when... Uh, Frank McManus and Joe Adam will be there at the party with the rest <laughs> of the staff. So that's great. Um, anyway, the government obviously are hoping that the Scottish football will submit plans for up to three test events involving fans on Saturday the 12th of September. Now, obviously, um, you know, we're hoping that by the 14th, you know, lots of uh, crowds will be, not lots of crowds, but lots of clubs will be allowed to get crowds in. But we're looking at numbers in the low hundreds Rangers, Dundee United, Ross County, Celtic um, should be on that list uh, for test events. But uh, we'll wait to see as we get closer to that date in September. But it's certainly a step in the right direction. That's the latest uh, news there. Um, so with regards to Aki's Rangers, I think we're all of the opinion that it's going to be a comfortable win. One game that I'm not going to bum it up, Tam, you're at Easter Road. It's Hibs against Aberdeen. It's two sides that surely will entertain us this weekend. No, it's live on Sky, isn't it? They've been hoping they'll be desperate for a few goals. Um, obviously, I'll be covering it, as you know, Peter, for Hibs TV again. And uh, Hibs will be looking to, to keep the unbeaten run going. I think Aberdeen will be a tough nut to crack, though. I think they've you know, a good result during the week. And um, I think they're starting to pick up points. The lad Hedges up front looks as if he's a, a good player. Um, he can open the door. So I think it'll be a really, really hard game for Hibs, to be honest. Yeah, let's hear from the Hibs boss, Jack Ross, on this match. I think that um, a team that's finished where they have done and, and consistently been in semi-finals and finals um, is testament to the job Derek's done and, and testament to the there's a core group that have been through that experience and then they've added and changed things around that. But um, it's a team that is used to doing that and that's what we need to strive to be. So Sunday's a really good marker for us again because we want to do what Aberdeen have done consistently for a number of years. Game of the weekend for me, Charlie. I, I think Hibs might nick it 1-0. What about you? I'm going 2-2. Two, two. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Two teams that are, are, are good. good two, two good sides with players that are, um, you know, they can open the door and um, I'm going to go 2-2 two, two and hopefully the Sky pundits and the, the, the fans will be happy. Well, if Ian Crocker is watching the show, as I know he often likes to watch our show, Charlie, he's looking and thinking, wow, Charlie Adams says 2-2, two, two. that'll be magnificent. And I cannot wait to hear Ian Crocker turn around to Andy Walker and say, well, Andy, 89 minutes and no goals here and not a lot of action in either box. Because <laughs> if, you, if you are a Sky executive, Ruffy, you must be beating your head off the wall. They are crying out for goals here. And I said in midweek that by the time the 12th of September comes around, they'll be looking and thinking, right, here comes the Scottish football feature after the Bulls and the Tiddlywinks. Yeah, but I think, like the guys, I think this game uh, could just uh, be the game uh, that will ignite the season. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of good players on show. 
I think this is a tester for Hibs. Uh, I, I don't think Hibs have really been, although they've done remarkably well, I think they've been fortunate in a couple of games. Uh, I don't think they've been magnificent. I'm, I'm, I don't know why, but I, I'm going to go Aberdeen to win this. I'm going to go Aberdeen to win 2-1. Wow. wow. Now, that is amazing because, Charlie, in the nine years that we've been doing this programme, Ruffy has tipped the high bees to win practically every match, apart from maybe the odd one against Celtic. So, Charlie, you are honoured here. A man who's a Hall of Famer at Hibs has just tipped Aberdeen. Tam, I can't believe it. <laughs> you will believe it when you, want, when you hear my prediction, Peter. <laughs> go on. <laughs> I'm going to go. I, I'm going to go Hibs one, Aberdeen two. Oh wow! wow. Oh, wow. that is incredible, <laughs> Charlie. Wow. What a day this is, eh? What a day! You think I should... Two Don's wins. Do you think Leanne Dempster will be watching this? Because if you will, you better forget you're not working Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if ever, if ever there's a man who's calling it as he sees it, uh, Charlie, did you give us your prediction on this one? Yeah, I said two, 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 two. Good, so two, two. Plenty of goals. And Okay, I'm the only one going for uh, the Hibbies to win by a solitary goal, but maybe uh, Martin Boyle. I, I love the way that they, they celebrated Martin Boyle by saying he signed on for Hibs just like his wife, as if that was a, a key <laughs> decision in it all, Tom. But there's no doubt about it. I mean, you had a little bit of doubt that he was actually going to sign, but this is great news for Hibs. He should be flying. Where, where do you think he's at his best, Tom? Yeah, um, through the middle, Peter. I like him as a striker. You know, in the opening game of the season against Kilmarnock, he scored two goals. You know, he's pacing behind. You know, he caused them all sorts of problems. <laughs> Hibs have got good options up front. You know, they've got Christian Dodge up there. They've got Kevin Nisbet. So, you know, he's, you're probably looking at playing uh, Martin out in the wing. But I like him through the middle, Peter. I, I'd, I'd always play him through the middle. But um, he's, he's as effective either wing. But I, I think it always just fell into place, Peter. Obviously, you mentioned his wife signing for Hibs ladies. I've just had a just a little kid, and I think they're fairly settled in Edinburgh. So, um, you know, I was surprised, but pleasantly surprised, as I said the other day, that he, that he signed on again. It's a huge boost for Hibs, and hopefully he can, he kick, can kick on with his performances. Um, he's at a good age now, 27, where he should be approaching the peak of his career. Yeah, Joe Parker, who's a big heavy, she follows this show on a regular basis. Joe, thank you very much for sticking with us. And, and of course, Joe's entitled to her opinion. And she's just said, Tam, you're getting blocked tonight. So uh, I think it's only <laughs> fair, Joe, that you, you, you realise that t t Tam clearly doesn't realise where his bread is buttered. So Joe <laughs> is a big heavy, is blocking Tam, which that reduces Tam now to only four followers on Twitter now uh, after that blocking tonight. <laughs> Um, anyway, apart from anything else, um, guys, I've got a great idea for us. I don't know if Charlie's up for this or not, but I've managed to get 8,000 spare tickets for Livingston against Ross County. I don't know if you fancy coming along to that. We'll get all our mates and we'll go to see Livingston against Ross County, Ruffy. Do you fancy it? Uh, no. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, <laughs> I just... Oh. I just the, the the surface they play on just doesn't do it for me. When I when I see the players running about and that rubbers flying up in the ground and it just doesn't do it. Uh, but again, it might be one of the games where we all think it's going to be dire. The two of them might just throw caution to the wind and and and, and give us a good game. But I I'm sitting on the fence in this one. Uh, I think Ross County are, are proving me wrong so far. So I'm going to go Livingston one, Ross County one. I, I think I also uh, have gone for a draw on this one. The only thing that's really, I think, is interesting about this is because I've mentioned that the transfer window will still be open, I do think somebody is going to, going to snap up Ross Stewart, uh, Charlie, because he's got that kind of a tall look about him, but he's got a good touch, knows the way to goal, and I think he's a, the kind of a star man that could light this game up. Yeah, there's a couple of clubs in Eng England... Um looking at him at the moment that I know of um, club close to me is just is, uh, I, I know that they're really interested in him they like what he is and um, I think he, he can score goals at this level so no I think he's um, you know he's a good player and I think Livingston will, will, will just nick it 1-0 um, you know on that pitch it's a tough place to go but 
you know, I think it's a, it's an advantage for them, and I think they can get it one 0 Going for the draw in this one, although I would suggest to you, Tam, um, having leathered them in uh, my column on the website, um, I think they're where they are right now on merit at the bottom of the table. But I think the acquisition of Anthony Stokes could be a bonus. It will certainly maybe change their attitude to the way they've been playing over the last three or four weeks. Yeah, they need to play the ball with Stokes' feet, Peter. You know, they're not going to be able to lump balls up to Anthony Stokes. That's not his game at all. You know, Stokes, he's technically a very good player. And maybe they'll change it, try and get, you know, Pittman in, in behind him, you know, and, and play off him and, and get balls into his feet. So, it be interesting to see if, if Stokes he plays. You know, obviously, he's not played for a while. I think his last club was, was in Iran a while ago. So, I'm, I'm not sure if he's match fit. But I think he'll be a good signing for Livingston. I think he'll add to their attacking options. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm going to have to agree with Ruffy here and go... 1-1. One, one. OK. Um, Joe Parker says, uh, thank Tam. He gave a, a shout out to my late mammy. Um, he's a, a useless pundit, but he's got a heart of green. And I think Joe is one of the most astute people that we've had on this <laughs> programme. She, <laughs> she, she, She's it's, not wrong. It's Joe's, exactly. It's Joe's way of saying, I love you, but you're a numpty. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, thanks, Joe, for that. He, he knows it's all about opinions. Um, Kelly against Dundee United. Yusuf Malumbo. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he says it's the only club I ever wanted to play for again. <laughs> And again, this is his, this is his third time back there. I mean, he's a useful player, uh, Tam, but he's back there for a third time. He's looked good in training, and Alec Dyer thought, "Yep, we could use you." Yeah, I think it'd be a good sign. What's he been doing for two years? He's just he's not played. He's not kicked the ball. I don't think since he left Celtic. I mean, it's weird that he's just took two years out of football. I'm sure he could have got a club. Um, so I don't know how how fit he is or where he is match match fitness, but. If he's fit, he's, he's an excellent player. You know, Celtic, I, I thought he'd get more game time at Celtic. You know, he never get much of a look in there, but he earned his move. Uh, his, second, his second spell at Kamala, he was, he was superb. So if he can reproduce that, Peter, they'll, they'll, they've got a really good signing on their hands and it'll really strengthen their, their midfield. Yep, they're coming up against the Dundee United side that I like the look of. I like the way they play football. I think they've got really good youngsters in there as well. They impressed me last week. OK, in that final third, they maybe didn't test Celtic a, a, as much as they would have liked. Um, but Lauren Shanklin's not there. Will he get the supply when he comes back? Will we have him for Scotland? Here's the update on his Scotland situation from the Dundee United boss, Mickey Mellon. I spoke to Steve about it and... He, he, Steve was wanting, and I agree, I, I quite like, I want Lawrence to stay in among the Scotland group. I don't want him to feel like he's outside of it. So Steve was always going to name him in the squad anyway. But the understanding was, we had the conversation because we're all adults. Sometimes we did talk sense. We did have the understanding that there will come a time at some point in this week where the question will be yes or no, and we'll leave it until that moment. Well, I, I always think it's a tricky one, this, uh, Charlie, because it's a game against Israel, which is fine, then the Czech Republic, but you're looking at a lad that hasn't kicked the ball for his club, and the last thing you want to do is jeopardise, um, you know, his fitness, you know, going into, you know, that first quarter for Dundee United. Yeah, I think it's, listen, it's, like Mickey said, it's sensible we've had an adult conversation um, that, you know, He's he is one of the, the the five best strikers that we have. So put him in the squad. And if after the game on Saturday he doesn't feel right to go with Scotland and he needs more training time with Dungeon United, then then he'll come out of the squad. It's you know it's it's not a bad decision. It's sensible, and um, you know it'll be good to get to see the lad actually get on the pitch for United this season and and try and prove that you know he's um, a definitely a Premier League player because he's he's done it at every other level he's been at. He's just needing to get that opportunity. And it's been hindered with this ankle injury. So, no, I think it's good that that, that Mickey's obviously been honest with with the the media and how it is. And um, no, for, hopefully that you know Shanklin does get his opportunity. But it's got to be for the best for the lad, not just for the country, but and also the club. But for him as well, is it going to him going away for ten days? Is that going to help him fitness wise and and go and get some game time, or is he better staying at Dun United? So that's the decision you've got to make after the game tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Ruffy, I mean, I like the look of the boy. Um, he didn't do himself uh, <clears throat> anything uh, negative when he played for Scotland. And I think if I was him, I'd be saying to myself, 
get the head down, big season, got to try and prove some doubters. I mean, we were looking at him and wondering if he could make that step up, Ruffy. But he's just got to go mm-hmm. score goals in the Premiership and, and hopefully with a bit of luck, you know, we're thin on the ground for strikers that score goals for Scotland. Yeah, that'll be the target, you know. At, uh, I'm sure you'll be listening to what everybody's saying as well. You know, you've scored goals everywhere else. Can you do it in the Premier? Uh, and, and that's what you'll be wanting to do. You know, that that's what you as an individual. Uh, I would agree a wee bit with Charlie. I, uh, if he's fit enough, it, I would let him go in with the squad, you know. And uh, obviously he's going to be training away with the squad. I think it's always good to be part of a squad. Uh, he would just get introduced to the squad there and he, he scored the goal in the, in the game. So I would let him go. I would let him, as long as he was training and he was getting his fitness up. But go, the privilege, the, the, the benefit that Dundee United would get was him being away with the Scotland squad and he'd come back having worked with all these players, Scottish players, and there'd be a buzz about him. So I think in the, the, the long run, Dundee United would get the benefit of that, him being part of the squad. Because it, it, it must be horrible if you're in the squad and then you're out and you're wondering whether you're going to get back in. So I would just include them and just let them be about the place, mix them with the international players, and I'm sure that will benefit them in the long run. Yeah, I think we're going to have a difference of opinion here again, lads, with regards to the scoreline. I'm going to go Killy 1, Dundee United 2. Tam? I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one again. Short and sharp. You've you've got about three draws this this weekend, Tom. You, I've, I, if you get three I, I, draws up, you're going to be wealthy. I think the three, I think the three games I can't really separate them. You know, the next game, obviously, I think as well. I think it'll be three very tight games. I'm going to go one one again. Yeah. Okay. I think United uh, Charlie, will win it one nil. I'm going to go for United to nick it one nil. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going okay. to. I'm going to go Commander two one. Home advantage. Come on. He's yep, different uh, to me. Well, this is the great news now because what's happening now, like that, Ruffy. Uh, Charlie, there's going to be a dramatic change this weekend. I've had a look at all the scores and you're getting real in, McManus. Day by day, you've started to make changes. And I mean, I, I'm looking at something here and, and somebody said there, uh, Tam's, Tam's a great judge um, and a great pun, pundit, so... There you are. There's some people, uh, you know, jumping to your defence. You really need to stop getting your cousins to ride into the program, Tam, to defend you. But nevertheless, <laughs> there are people. There are people. There are people out there who like you as well. Um, now, uh, I'm looking at that game. Okay, we've called it. Um, we're on to one that I think is going to be difficult to call because, you know, St Johnston at home, fine. Um, Callum Davison is still trying to get that team. Um, you know, in the way he wants them to play. They lost that late goal to the Hibbies. What did you make of them, Tam? Um, do you think there's signs there that they they will not be in trouble this season? Um, I think they're pretty solid, Peter. And, you know, obviously the game against Hibs, there was nothing in the game. They're, they're very unlucky, I think, with two decisions. I think that the offside goal, obviously, everybody knows it was onside. They're, you know, they're robbed by a goal. And then I think the, the penalty was soft on Porty. So I think two big decisions went against them in the game. When it was a game, there was nothing in be- between the teams. So I think they're just lacking a wee rub of the green. Um, I, I worry about where they're going to get the goals from, Peter. Um, they're, they're reasonably solid at the back. I like Jason Kerr at the back and Liam Gordon. Um, so I, I just don't know if they've got a striker. You know, a Halloran does a lot of his best work in the wide areas. If they go to number nine that's going to stay in the box and get 10, 15 goals... I don't see it early doors, Peter, so that could be a problem for them. Um, but I don't think they'll be. I don't think they'll get relegated. But I think they'll, uh, they'll, they'll struggle to get into the top six. Oh, interesting. Um, St Mirren, on the other hand, uh, of course, uh, they've got a new signing in Christian Dennis. Um, is he going to play? This is what uh, Jim Goodwin had to say about his new man. He's coming on great. Um, we've had a, a good bit of fitness work with Christian over the last week, and he's looking sharper. He's getting fitter. He's, um, you know, the he's just he's been unfortunate in terms of he's had a bit of a stop-start pre-season where he was training with Notts County in the build-up to the playoff final, and then he had two and a half weeks off after that. So we just want to be careful with the new lads, the likes of Dylan and Christian, that we don't ask too much of them too soon. I know from a 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about uh, St Mirren. I mean, Paisley is an affluent area. Surely to God, Ruffy, they can put a good camera on Jim Goodwin and a good <laughs> microphone. And you that can was stolen for Fergie Carr. Well, I was just about, to, <laughs> just about to say, I mean, St James is a great lad at St Mirren. They just need to go and buy themselves a good camera so we can hear, because Jim is good quality, Ruffy, when he's speaking. I've got a lot of time for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have as well. I think he's done particularly well since he's in there. I think the, the additions he's brought to the club uh, and the contacts, obviously, he's using. I, I think they're a home team for me this year. I, I, I'm going to go for St. Johnson. I think, like Tam says, we rub the green. I think they'll do it. Uh, so I'm going to go for St. Johnson to win 2-1. Uh, Charlie? I think it'll be a draw. I'm going to go 0-0. I just think there's not going to be much quality on show. I think both teams are going to struggle to score goals. And, um, yeah, I'll go nil now. But Jim looks like he's doing his interviews in a, in a community centre, didn't he? The halls look... Yeah. That was, that was terrible. Uh, on a yeah, Nokia 6210? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It did, look like, it did look like that, you know, with the, the big dark eyes, you know. Um, it looks as if he's in the cell next to you, Tom, to be honest with you. But nevertheless, <laughs> um, how, how do you see it, McManus? Uh, I'm going to go 1-1 one, one again. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. Wow. I'm going to go a, a narrow win for St Mirren. Um, so there's so many differences here. Um, and of course... <laughs> Charlie's stuff. I, I get the feeling that Charlie's <laughs> the family are away on a big luxury holiday somewhere yeah. and they've left him and he's had a bad weekend. Do you guys? Yeah. You know, no, no, no there'll be no gold, I'm... there will be no laughs, yeah. there will be no enjoyment. I, I <laughs> think, I think, uh, I think Charlie's predictions are all revolving around these teams need a good midfielder to make these teams work. <laughs> they, need, they, need, they, need, they need some creativity. <laughs> These teams are all dying out for a midfielder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ruffy, you're, you're telling me here, Ruffy. That was me. Um, that's, that's my little um, bit in there. That was my thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, Frank, Fr Frankie Harley is on Facebook and he says, lads, I'm sorry, I missed the start of the show. Has Charlie confirmed he's signed for Dundee yet? So, I mean, this was the big day for us, Charlie. We were waiting. We were just waiting for you to hold up the jersey, turn around and put the number on. And, you know, it's still in negotiation at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's still in negotiation with... with uh at the moment we'll see where it goes over the weekend and we'll hopefully have some news next week yeah and and, and is the real turning point in this deal for you the fact that the house is next door to tam's new house is that really the thing that's putting you off it <laughs> <laughs> well, i've not i've not had any misdemeanors yet where i'm actually going to go to prison but i'm uh, <laughs> i'm I'm all, I'm all right at the moment um, yeah. No, listen. It's it, it, these things. These things take time, and um, it's important wherever you go that that both parties are happy, and we can try and get something done. Yeah, is it, if you get it done and you're back in Scotland, which is is great. Is there always that feeling when you go away? Do you still hanker for it, or is it just? Uh, I mean, is that the driving force for you? The family really, you know, it's great. It's a good time to come home. It's the buzz and the excitement. Um, to go on and get an opportunity to go and play and and play somewhere that you you know you feel that you're going to contribute and try and add to to what they have. And um, you know, over the next next you know couple of years, I hope that's that's where it can go. But at the moment, we're we are a little bit of a part, and we'll see where it goes over the weekend. And hopefully, discussions will will take it where where it needs to be, and um, we'll hopefully have a deal sorted. Yeah, that would be great. Good to see you back in Scottish football if that happens. Of course, if he has a if he has a shocker, Tam, you're gonna to have to call it on the programme. I mean, if he plays a bad game, you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to say it, Tam. You're gonna to have to be the pundit that just is hard hitting and says, Adam got a two <laughs> two stars out of ten and the, the star check. <laughs> he, he knows it's all it's all about opinions. It's all about opinions. Yeah. We'll give her opinion off Tam. I know that. You're playing for the Scottish club. Yeah, absolutely. The first five yard pass that goes astray, what on you? <laughs> it's as simple yep. as that. Uh, just out of, just too short, out of curiosity. See when you were uh, see <laughs> when you were um when you were at uh, I mean obviously you said you, you thoroughly uh, enjoyed it um at Liverpool. Was there 
was there a particular moment um, in that whole time when you were when you were at Liverpool? When you're walking through the doors and you're just thinking, "This is magnificent. This is outrageous," you know. Uh, just every day when you go into a big club, it's the the buzz and the excitement of walking <laughs> in there every day is 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 incredible. But when you start to win trophies, and fortunate enough, we won the Carling Cup and. You know, scoring your first goal in front of the court was was incredible. So, it's um, no, it's being at a big club is just phenomenal, and it's different from from any other club, you know. But we, are, you know, these these things are are part of the the future, the plan. And um, I was lucky enough to to play for two of the biggest clubs that, that I believe are, are are in Europe. Yeah, and with that in mind, are you we always ask everybody on the program, Charlie, who, who are pundits on the program, are you the type of person who uh, keeps your strips? Do you keep your memorabilia? <clears throat> Is it the type of thing that you would frame and, and get it up in the wall? Yeah, I've got everything. I think I counted the other week. I think I've got about two hundred odd strips that I collected over the games and Scotland jerseys and you know different games. Peter, we you playing? <laughs> so I, I collect. Brilliant. I, I've collected every game. I try to collect the shirt if I can, and it doesn't matter if it was against Cheltenham or, you know, Barcelona. I try and get a shirt from every game if I can, and because it's memories that you remember, and when you look back, you see you can go back to these games and remember the good times. You know what I mean? And um, I, it's something that I've always done over my my career, really. Yeah, well done, Charlie. I am warming to you day by day on this programme. That's what, that's what you should do when you play in these games and you play at the highest level. You should keep these shirts and remember about them. Not like Ruffy. The dad puts yeah. them in a black bin bag, sticks them up in the loft, and then he forgets all about it. I mean, I mean, Ruffy, Charlie's got the right idea on this. Yeah, but Charlie's still quite young. Wait till he gets to 65. And then somebody comes to him and says, I'll give you 100 grand for all these strips. And then see what he says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, um, do you still have your Scotland caps in that, Ruffy? Yeah, I've still got all my Scotland caps. What I did was I kept my, uh, the, the strips that uh, were most memorable, like the strips against Brazil, the strips against England, you know, Peru. these kind of strips. The, the Peru, got the Peru one. Yeah, the, the World Cup ones. Are, the other ones, Charlie, as, as Peter said, were just up in a, an attic. I gave them to my dad, and they were just—I found them in a in a, an old tea chest, and uh, they, they meant really nothing to me. Uh, so I decided to sell them, and I knew there was people like Peter going about who were daft enough to buy some of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Charlie, you know the funny thing is, <laughs> Tom, Tom, I drove to Edinburgh. I drove to Edinburgh. He was putting these strips. Uh, in an in um, an auction at one of these uh, auction houses in Edinburgh, and I drove to Edinburgh um, and I phoned him and I said, I "I'm going through here. I cannot believe you are selling these tops." And he, I wasn't working with him at the time, um, and I phoned him and he and he started laughing. He said, "Off oh, these are the." These are the strips, my dad, and the only one time that I was going through there to get, he had a. It must have been Ruffy. It must have been early 60s. He had an early 60s number four Scotland shirt worn by Billy Bremner. And I thought, oh, I've got to get a hold of that. That's just absolutely minted. And would you believe it? I got there and it was five. I was five minutes too late. And it had gone. I was. How much did that he, one go for, Peter? I mean, it went, for, it, it went for a few quid, not as much as I thought. I, I would have been in the running term. Put it that way. I'd have been in the running with my paper oh, you're, money. You're no short and, a few uh, quid. <laughs> and the money, the money so I that saved so from... <laughs> is that something you did, Peter? Do you collect them? I've been oh, you have enough, to, actually. Hey. Oh. Yeah. You're no beanie piece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we see his man cave. There's a room that would open the door and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> there's, a man, <laughs> there's, a man, there's a man cave to die for, Charlie. That's all I'm saying. And I think I'd give you a run for your money on match-worn strips. Um, I might give you a run for your money. And, of course, Tam, I've got to be honest about it, even though he's gone and we don't mention his name, the number six, his jersey's still up there. I'm not going to take it down. <laughs> I've thought about it, yeah. but it's still up there. It's still did, up did there. You stick, did, did you stick that one behind the, your Larson top? 
just, just cover it. Cover it with the last one. The, the great, the uh, great thing about it is, if anybody comes to stay at the house, there is a Rangers room. There's obviously a few other rooms as well where people can pick the team <laughs> that they support and want to stay. And is that fair, Ruffy? Yeah. Yeah, but you only see the Rangers room if you go into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, if you believe that Muppet, you're in a bad place, I have to tell you. Anyway, apart from, apart from that, uh, 200 is absolutely fantastic. I love that, Charlie. Well done, son. Um, good to be proud of all the stuff that you've done in the game. Um, interestingly enough, just before um, we get ready for the weekend and enjoying ourselves, um, don't forget to send me back the text, guys on at least we're, we're finally going to get some kind of a socially distancing together. And, and somebody reminded me, when you have your little social, uh, socially distanced um, get-together, Charlie and Nazy, what are you going to do with them? And I said, the boys are out because we're not going to jeopardise, we're not going to jeopardise their careers. They're not going to the SFA TAM for a <laughs> hearing and a, and a penalty because they came to the PLZ get-together. Yeah, we're in our own uh, little bubble with the PLZ crew, so, you know, the guys are obviously still playing, and uh, I've got games coming up, so, you know, if they can make it, it'd be great, but if not, we'll, we'll, we'll understand. Ah, there's plenty, we'll, we'll yeah. be there, don't worry about that. Yeah, absolutely. You're a team player. You're a team player. Um, now, uh, a lot of people, uh, as ever, um, posting messages. Um, Keith Berry, brilliant, Ruffy. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> Ruffy's got some. Ruffy's got some right good uh, tops. Uh, Ruffy, you did mention one there that I haven't seen. You said to me you've still got the Brazil uh, top. I've never seen that one. What, what have you done with that? Never seen that in your house. I, I think it's just in the bottom drawer of one of the cupboards. I haven't had time to put it up in a frame. <laughs> Uh, oh. this what happens with Peter's preparing that bed there just what happens well, I don't know where the other one is so I've got two of them but I'll find them <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got a, a, what I've done is I've put my the good ones that I've got on, on like on rails so my good ones are on rails and if you're rubbish you're in a you're in an old suitcase in a, 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 a yeah. cupboard, so we'll, um, yeah. we'll did see. You, when you when you when you played Charlie, did you uh, of the year you got a cap for every game? So you get a cap with Scotland. You get a cap for every um, qualifier, and you get a pen for the friendlies. So obviously, I've got all. I think I've got about I think it's sixteen caps and um, qualifying caps. And obviously the pennants and that, but it's um, yeah, I've kept everything the caps and shirts and things like that. I've just not got around to putting them together and putting them up somewhere. Yeah, Alan McLean has got a good point here, Charlie. He says, Can you ask Charlie if he remembers when he won the first division with St. Mirren and he gave away his shirt, his shorts, and his boots and he ended up in his pants? Is that right? Yeah, no, we um, we, we won the league um, at, <coughs> the, um, at home. And we, um, the lads bet me pots and um, Kevin McGowan. And I said, right, lads, come in, go in, go and give away your boots, your socks and everything. So I come out, gave away my shirt, my socks, slips, the, my tuba grips, socks, boots, everything. And I end up just walking around with flip-flops on the T-shirt um, just, just for a bit of fun. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, these are the, the things. But oh, it's, it's good times and it's um, things that you remember that you were part of a successful team, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what usually that's what us, so usually happens with Tom McManus in a night out. He ends up getting away all his gear. <laughs> I do, <laughs> I. He <laughs> doesn't remember the morning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Tom, Tom, what do you make of uh, Ann, uh, you know, um, Ann Budges, obviously, talking about uh, yesterday. I was through there in Edinburgh having a chat with her and Andrew McKinley. I think Andrew McKinley's going to be a great addition to ours. I think he'll fight the fight for them, um, certainly trying to make sure they're at the forefront of everything um, that's happening that could change in European football. They don't want to be left behind. They want to make a, a real move to try and get out of that division uh, in one season. Um, but I was going to ask you, Tam, she's mentioned that one team have been in for Hickey and it looks <laughs> as if it could be about £1.5 million. Pounds. Interestingly enough, Celtic get 30% of that sell-on if he does leave Hearts. 
Yeah, I was reading that the other day, Peter. I think that's incredible. Obviously, he was a kid at Celtic, and, and Celtic let him go. So it's obviously been for his benefit to go to Hearts and get a lot of game time. Um, you know, and he's, he's he's done really, really well at Hearts. There's a lot of big clubs in for him. Um, you know, one and a half million, I think, would be great. Uh, obviously, a big sell-on in there if, it, if the boy goes on and does well elsewhere. And it's a lot of money for Hearts, because as we said, Hearts have really, you know, they've been through the mill. Um, over the last couple of months, they've been court cases and they've lost money by getting relegated. So that would soften the blow a little bit, you know, getting a fee in. And I think they'll just be hoping to get it done now because, you know, it seems to have been dragging on for the whole summer, Aaron Hickey. You know, he's been linked to, to three or four clubs and it's still not been a deal been done. So I don't know if he's <coughs> taking his time picking um, or if there's not been a, a deal agreed. So Hearts will be wanting to get that done, get the money in the bank and then use it to strengthen the squad. Yeah, I just noticed there that John Baird has joined us. We Bairdy Ruppy has been a regular on this programme over the years, scored his goal in that uh, final for Wraith Rovers and of course has had a great career. He's out there in uh, Australia now, he's settled down with the family. We've been staying in touch with him. He's coaching kids, his kids are out there, they're embracing the whole lifestyle. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic uh, that he's doing well out there. Yeah, I think it's fantastic now that a lot of younger players you know, are looking to the horizon, they're looking at other ventures, and it's great uh, if you can if you can move about and experience football in different other countries. But Australia seems to be the place, you know, that you can settle down with your family uh, and really enjoy the lifestyle over there. And no, I think we've heard he's done his shift here uh, with some wonderful memories, as he was telling us on his on, on the show. So no, good luck to him over there. Yeah, great to have him watching his uh, the program. It always gives him a wee taste of. Uh, home life, and uh, if you are watching, Birdie, um, it's a three-year sentence for Tam McManus. He's in there at the moment. He's able to use his <laughs> phone just in a one-hour period at Barlini, um, and that's what happens when you hang about with Harry Maguire. So, Birdie, that's what's happened to Tam. Ian Noble says, I had a Lineker Grampus 8 top. Now, I don't know about you, but there are some no, tops that you. are rare... And unique, that's a good one. He also had an Austrian top, Duncan Shearer smocked for his Scotland top, and a Figo top from his days at Sporting Lisbon. Um, and he says, I sold them. Sold them, though. Um, God, that Grampus 8 one would have been a good one, Tam, to keep a hold of, wouldn't it? Oh, you'd like that in your collection, wouldn't you, Pedro? Yeah? Absolutely. I bet, I bet you've got that one. These are, these are rare ones, to be perfectly honest with you. Hey, Charlie? Uh, what? Is there any that you've got that you've not got that you would like? Any? Well, there's a good question. There's a great question. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there is, there is only one top that I really want. I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes you're lucky. You, you meet uh, people who are your friends <laughs> who, who give you tops from various games that they've played in. And, and Barry and I are good friends. And he, he, he obviously um, gave me his Rangers top from the UEFA Cup match that they were playing against Ozer. Uh, and also in the Premier League, so um, you know that they're great. They're on. A, they're in a frame. Um, I think the only one top that I would absolutely die for is um, a 1978-79 Kenny Dalglish Liverpool top, an authentic one, not not a not a, a replica which has been signed. I think if I right. if I could get a Liverpool number seven from that era, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. I've got my two you know, I've got a top signed by Kenny, but uh, I think I've got Danny McGrain's nineteen seventy seven Scottish Cup final shot signed by him. And if I could get the Kenny one, that would be my two boyhood heroes complete. And I've got a few rakers, but the, the number seven one Ruffy would be great, wouldn't it? Red, number seven, the V neck <clears throat> Just yeah, it's, it's, a, it? it's a fantastic strip. It's, it's just like the Scotland strip. Same, you know, if you're there with Dennis Law on it or somebody like that, Jim Baxter, the the 3-2 game at Wembley, that strip, it's the same sort of icon strip of, of that era, you know, and certainly that Liverpool strip is fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, just before we go, guys, um, Nicola Sturgeon says it wasn't about <laughs> football being us, uh, you know, the second class citizen, Tam. It was all about just one um, sporting event, a limited amount of people in Glasgow against Edinburgh. And then, you know, they will learn lessons from how they approach the ground, how they go through the turnstile, how they are seated, um, the precautions that are taken. And then, as we mentioned earlier, football will get the chance uh, in three areas to, to actually get fans into the ground. Yeah, listen, I wish the rugby, you know, the rugby folk all the best, um, the SRU, and I hope it goes well for them because 
you know, if it does, it'll, it'll speed up the, the, the football fans getting back into the stadiums, and we're all desperate to get supporters back in. You know, it's even if there's a couple of thousand in there, and you know, it just adds a bit of atmosphere, and you know, it's, it's it, it just it was just be great. But hopefully, it all goes well for them at the weekend, and we can get we can get a wee chance and all. Yeah, great credit to you, Charlie. I must admit, you mentioned it the other day that I shared your view on it with regards to Harry Maguire. He's come out and he says there's a story, my story, at the other end um, to tell on this whole situation. He's got a retrial. Uh, the boy himself is adamant, uh, I think, that he would do the same again. He has nothing to apologise for in this incident. I feel sorry that he's been taken out of the England side and now people are seriously asking the question, should you be captain of Manchester United? I think it's it's important that the club stick by him. He's like you say, he's got a retrial now. He's he's innocent now, he'll proven guilty. And I think it's important that now he could focus on playing football. The the thing about the the BBC's thing last night was they never showed the full the full interview, which would have been better for everybody. Um, but he's come out and he's said what he's had to say, and um, we'll wait and see when this trial will be because you know there's talk of it being you know eighteen months, two years before this this goes ahead. So. If he can now focus on playing football and getting fit again and, and going again for Man United, the club have backed him and, and we have to move on from it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, here, here on that. I think probably the, the, the main reason they wouldn't have shown the whole interview is basically um, not wanting to jeopardise the court case or in any way prejudice uh, what uh, will happen over there over a period of time. Um, so that may be... Uh, why they edited it down, not to mention any specifics on it. Um, just before we go, Colin Terrace says, George Bess, Hibbs top. Where are they now? I mean, Ruffy, honestly. I don't know who mm -hmm. would have got a hold of them. I'm almost certain uh, anyone who was on that Hibbs board would have said, George, mm -hmm. give me one of those tops, sign it, and I'll get it framed. Mm -hmm. Anybody's got a George <laughs> Bess top, Hibby, you know, in the Hibbs strip, Ruffy. Yeah. Yeah, who, who was, what was... What was the sponsor's name on the front that began with a B? Buckter. Buckter. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. would be, you don't see many of them going about, yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic yeah. one. Uh, interesting, interestingly on that, Ruffy, is there one <laughs> that you could have got somebody's top that you regretted not asking them or, or somebody that you would love to have got a hold of one? It's a good, it's a good question from Charlie. Uh, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, Mario Kempis was in that uh, last one. Uh, I didn't realise it was his until I put it in. Uh, that that would have been a good one to keep a hold of. Uh, but I don't know how you get into that strip because it was it was so thin it wasn't real. But uh, no, there's yeah, nobody there. I can think of. Probably Pele or some Maradona or somebody like that. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, um, uh, Ruffy, because Mark Hately, um, gave me his England top from Mexico 86 and I kid you not it's like that I mean there is not yeah, a pick on it I, I would yeah. I, I would need to, I would need to wear it as an armband that's how <laughs> that's, there's not a <laughs> shine. I don't I don't yeah. even think I get my head in through the, the hole yeah. I mean it's, it's absolutely yeah. like that and it's it, incredible and, it, and it, if you had the shorts you'd be lucky if you could get one leg in them as well this is not the uh, show for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. Tom <laughs> will said. Tom, is there a is there a shirt you've got that's your prized possession? Uh, yeah, I've got a Paul Gascoigne one. I played with Gaza at uh, Boston United when I was down there on loan. Uh, Gaza's last ever senior club, and I've got a a, a, a jersey signed uh, to me uh, from Gaza. Uh, Gascoigne oh, 19 brilliant. the Boston top so uh, I've got that um, I've got a couple of ones I've got a couple of ones I played I've got one Pablo Angels I played against him in, the, in America for New York Red Bulls um, so there's, if they're known now you know you, all the strips you know you, there's a, Henrik Larson's and Ronald De Bowles and all the <laughs> guys you played against you'd have asked them for their strip but you, you just don't think yeah. about it at the time you know and you wish you'd, have, you'd, have, you'd maybe got a couple of the tops Yeah and, and on that note Charlie you mentioned your 200 tops is there's one that you wish you had that you didn't get? Um, uh, yeah, Messi, obviously, playing against Messi would have uh, been one of them. But no, it's just, you know, at the time, I was lucky enough to, to get against the midfielders that I played against and I managed to get, you know, all the, all the strips that I've got, you know, your skulls, Gerard, Lampard, Yaya Toure, David Silva. 
So no, I'm lucky that Ronaldinho, that's the one we got in the Champions League. So <coughs> it's um, no, it was great, and um, it's good to look back on them. Yeah, absolutely, Ronaldinho, Champions League top Barcelona. I mean, who would have that sort of top, Ruffy? <laughs> um, Stuart, Stuart Ramsey says Peter you're like me you've got a heat like a 30 bob cabbage I've never heard that statement before <laughs> but I'm, I presume I'm presuming Stuart said you've just got a big heat and it's as simple as that <laughs> um, listen um, right now uh, I might as well say to you thanks to everyone who uh, actually um has posted messages we're absolutely delighted like share and follow us on facebook if you can and on youtube if you get a chance subscribe as well we are delighted you could join us all those football fans posting their messages over the weekend we are going to be hanging on to every picture that charlie adam posts on his twitter account because he said us all going mental the other day there as he drove past ibrox and we thought he hasn't told us surely is he going back to to rangers but there's a club there and he's going to keep posting photographs every time he drives past somewhere until finally we get to know who he's going to join. Whoever it is, Charlie, we wish you the very best. We'll see you next Wednesday. Tom, Ruffy and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. Indeed. Visit arnoldclark.com.